Hi, it's July 31st, 2021. What's significant about today? The Tokyo Olympics are going on. The Mariners are over 500. The Seattle Kraken are making their NHL debut. And oh, it's our 69th Tacoma Obon Festival. But, oh, wait a minute. Because of the Delta variant, we got to make a pivot. It's actually going to be our first drive through Obon. Today, Emma Inge, remember that name, and I, Kevin Iketa, are going to take you through a little journey of what it takes to put on a drive through Obon. Hi, we're in the basement of the Buddhist church. We're in the place where everything comes together. The bento assembly line. Now this doesn't happen, you know, by happenstance. I want to introduce Lynn Tonino. She's the one that coordinated this whole event to tell us a little bit about how the bentos are made and then one special feature, protecting everyone through COVID protocols. So I want to thank Lynn for all her hard work in making this happen. Please welcome Lynn Tonino. Hi. Um, so today we're making bento, and it's the somen salad because somen is a uh, primary menu item in our so, uh, obon event. And, but this is going to be a somen salad, so we're going to put a lot of different toppings on it. And what I try to do is minimize the number of cooking and number of helpers we have in the kitchen. So what I did was ask for volunteers where I could get the husband and wife to come pair up and work together, or a family, like the Inch family, where they have four, and they're helping out today too. So we have the um, azuki mochi. No, normally we would sell the daifuku mochi, but that requires a lot of hands-on. So if we could bake the mochi, that wouldn't require as many people. And we have the azuki mochi, we have the butter mochi, and then um, baked manju. How many bentos are we making? Uh, 320. We were anticipating 150, but the sales just went through the roof, and we doubled that. Hey, thanks. We are definitely looking forward to tasting that bento at the end of this event. Hi, we're in the kitchen of the Buddhist church here looking at Spam Musubi, the assembly line for Spam. I have Denise Klein here to tell us a bit, little bit about how we make a great Spam Musubi. Hi Kevin, thank Hi, you. So first we start by pressing the rice in this mold. Um, after we're done pressing, we'll remove the mold. We'll place a piece of Spam neatly on top of the rice, then, We'll take a piece of nori and wrap it around the rice, folding it under, and the steam from the rice will seal it, making a nice spamisubi that will go into each bento box. Oh my God, does that look good? Wait till we taste it. Hey, guess what? I stole the Spam Musubi to give it a try. Now, I'm not supposed to do this, but don't tell anyone. Now, look at this. Look at the layers of rice, the Spam, and I think there's a little nori or a shoyu sauce underneath wrapped in seaweed. I don't know. The seaweed we call nori in Japanese. Let's give it a try. Oh, man. This is awesome. you got to come and taste this someday. We're looking forward to you sharing in our Spam Musubi the celebration. Hey, g give me some of that. Give, hey, give, hey, me some of that. give me some of that. <laughs> Hi, we're here in the back parking lot of the church. And you know, one of the great things about making a bento 
is having the right ingredients. And one of the main ingredients is a great corn. There's a secret to that. And I have John Inge, the master chef, to tell us about what goes into a great bento corn. Well, thanks. Uh, the, the secret ingredients, actually, we, what we do is we uh, briefly kind of flash boil these to make sure they're tender, and then we bring them out. And um, it's a combination, the sauce we have is a combination of shoyu sugar, and I'm afraid it's a mystery ingredient that I can't divulge because it's our own private temple recipe that we have. But we leave them on, we make sure that there's nice grill marks. Uh, the, the marinade is a terrific accompaniment to, to the corn. We try to get as kind of young, sweet corn as we can, and with the kind of the salty marinade, it's perfect. Well, thanks. There you have it. Don't try making this at home. Hey, one of the other secrets to a great bento is the rice. Here, it's called Japanese rice. I have with me Jeff Hiro, the master rice maker, to tell us a little, a little more of what goes into making a great Japanese rice. Well, first we washed the rice, and we did that on Thursday. And then today, we put it in these pots, and we uh, soak it for 20 minutes. And then it auto automatically cooks for 20 minutes. And then we let it steep for 20 minutes. And when we're done, we put it all in these cambrils, and it'll keep warm for three to four hours. And that's how we keep our rice ready for everyone coming in, and it stays hot. Oh man, I cannot wait to try this bento. Hi, I'm here with June Akita. Um, they were busy packing these bentos, and we'd like to show you what does a obon bento look like. So June, take it away. All right. Oh, okay. Um, just to let you know, you guys are really getting a good deal. You're gonna get a bottle of water, your drink, this is the best part, so I'm going to wait for that one. But inside your bento, ugh, you will get a delicious somen salad and a spam musubi. I don't know if you can see the spam in there. And a barbecue corn. These are all handmade by our volunteers here. And you're also gonna get a little baggie here. So inside here, you're gonna get some takuan, which is a pickled daikon, some red ginger and uh, black sesame seeds. And this is your sauce for your salad. So when you're done, shake it up and just pour it all over your salad. The best part is your dessert. I'm a dessert person. So you're gonna have three kinds of dessert. This is a coconut mochi, an azuki mochi, which is a green, uh, red base, red bean base, and this is a baked manju. And then you can have water. Hey, so there you have it, folks. And just yeah. think, next year, you could get this and more at our 70th Obon Festival next year. Yeah. See you next year. Hi, we're inside the Tacoma Buddhist Temple, inside the Hondo, or main hall. With me is Reverend Koyama of the Tacoma Buddhist Church. Sensei, can you tell me a little bit about the connection between Obon and Buddhism? Sure. So, basically, um, the story that's always told is the story of Mogalana and his mother. And Mogalana had the power to look into the different realms of existence. And after his mother passed away, he saw that his mother wasn't in any of the heavenly realms or any of the realms that you want to be born into. She was born in the realm of the hungry ghosts. So he didn't understand what to do. He was distressed. He went to the Buddha and the Buddha instructed him that he needed to perform some meritorious acts towards the other monks, like generosity and giving. So once he performed these meritorious acts, he could see that his mother was released from the realm of the hungry ghosts. And uh, he was so overjoyed that he just started to dance with joy and he started to just 
uh, dance all over the place. And that is the story that's sort of linked with this tradition here today. Oh, uh, since uh, I know traditionally we have a, what we call a Hatsubon service. What is that? So again, a Hatsubon service is a special service that uh, commemorates and memorializes the families who have lost loved ones uh, in between last year's Obon and this year's Obon. And um, usually, uh, and now with the tradition of this temple, we have the, the special candles uh, to dedicate for that. But then usually as well at, at the Hatsubon service, uh, the families who have lost loved ones in that year actually come up and offer incense. So it, it's um, one of those long-standing traditions that I think will continue as long as the temple continues. Hi, we're outside on the street corner where people are picking up their bentos. As they come in, we're, we're given a flavor of what actually a, a Bon Festival will look like. Uh, mini dances, taiko drumming, and to really do that, you have to have the right music. And we have Michael Shogi, who's our DJ. Hey, Mike, uh, what kind of music are you playing today? We are playing traditional Japanese dance music that we usually play for our Obon Festival oh, okay. here at the temple. What, what, uh, what song, uh, can you share with us a song? Sure, we'll uh, play a little bit of Tango Bushi for you, which is a great song that a lot of the people like to dance to. Oh, great, let's hear it. Hey, people are starting to bring, pick up their bentos right now, and we're going to start the entertainment. Part of any Japanese tradition in, uh, in the Obon Festival is the drumming. That's a key component. And today we have Fuji Taiko and Bobby Yusso, one of the founders of the Taiko, here to kind of talk to us about their group, what they do, and then give us a version of what they're going to play first. All right. Hey, um, welcome to the 2021 Obon Festival, um, the Bento Pickup. We are Fuji Taiko. We're about 12 years old here in Tacoma, uh, under the auspices of the uh, Hanganjin Temple here. Um, we uh, are basically a bunch of volunteers who love the, uh, the Taiko. Uh, which is basically the uh, the name for the Japanese drum here. Um, we don't necessarily have a leader, but a whole bunch of volunteers, basically, who just love it and uh, and contribute to the temple on various uh, special occasions. So, hey, in Taiko, in, in while the dancers are dancing, what's the significance of playing the drum during the dancing? Uh, during the dancing, basically, we're just accompanying the beat. Uh, it's uh, Taiko nowadays, basically, uh, is used for ceremonial purposes and festivals, uh, like you see here. Um, it used to uh, d designate the, uh, the township boundaries, basically. The lot of the taiko, the bigger the town. And they used to use also accompany uh, soldiers into war. But now, traditionally, it's basically just for ceremonial uh, purposes and festivals. So what's going to be your first song today? This is Gendai ni Ikiru. It's uh, created by Gary Tsujimoto of, of One World Taiko. And then uh, uh, Gary and... Um, the Nakawatase brothers, basically from Inochi Taiko, in Seattle, gave us authorization to play this uh, special song for you. It's, uh, it's a great song created by Gary uh, when he was in San Jose Taiko. Oh, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Fuji Taiko and Gendai.
Hey everyone, we're outside at the uh, Bento pickup, and here we have one of our first uh, first guests picking up their Bento. Hey, Ooh, I'm so excited to have Bento. Hey, what are you looking forward to about the Bento? Uh, I really love the corn, the roasted corn, and our family loves the Spam Masubi. So I'm picking up, and then I'm driving up to Bellevue to t drop them off at the the grandparents. Hey, what do you miss about a traditional what do you, traditional bone? Oh, I love the dancing and seeing all the kids, and they're just trying out all the dances, and the taiko's fabulous. Oh, don't forget the shaved ice. The best thing is the food. Love the food. Well, there you hear from an experienced Obon person. So we're looking forward to next year when we celebrate our 70th anniversary yeah, in New Orleans. 70th. So thanks for coming. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Hey, we're here with Eric. He's here to pick up his bento. Um, hey, Eric, it's good to see you. It's so good to see you. It's so hey, good to see you. I missed seeing you at the temple. Hey, I'm wondering, what are the, what, some of the things you miss about a traditional Obon. Uh, I miss the people. I really miss just getting together, seeing all the old friends from Temple, uh, from many years, people coming from up north, also all the people in the neighborhood just kind of coming and floating in and being together and just hanging out. Uh, I really miss that. I miss um, the musubi. Yeah. I miss the spam musubi. Uh, so I'm looking forward to eating the little bit this year, but I'm hoping we can be together next year. Awesome. Hey, well, next year we're going to celebrate our 70th, so we're looking forward to everyone getting together. And I know we have a Spam Musubi in the bento, so please enjoy. Hey, thanks for being here. Thank you. Part of our Obon uh, bento pickup is uh, we're given a flavor of what actually Obon is by having our dancers here uh, performing in Taiko, as, you, as you've heard. Today we have uh, Karen, Karen, Kyla, and Kenzo here. And um, we got Karen. I'd like to have you talk about uh, dancing and uh, what you like about dancing and what it means to you. I love dancing. We've been doing it for, what, four generations from uh, Dichan. Right? And so I love it just for the joy of dancing. The songs are familiar and it's something that the family gets to do together. You talk about family. Who do you have with you today? <laughs> my daughter, Kyla, and my son, Kenzo. Hey, Kyla, what do you, what do you miss about uh, traditional bone? I miss getting to see everybody that we usually only see in the summertime and getting to dance fun dances like Goshuondo all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and Kenzo, you've been a member of the church and now you're in college. Uh, How's college going? And then how? And and you're performing taiko. How do you balance life with that? Oh well, it's definitely different, a difficult balance. But I think with you have enough time and effort to put into it, like you can do whatever you want. Because I enjoy doing taiko, so I'll make time to come out here and spend time with temple, with family and friends, and it's really enjoyable. Hey, well, as, as you can see, our Bone Festival is about bringing families together, and it's about that community feel. So, again, we're looking forward to seeing you next year at our 70th anniversary. <laughs> hey, part of our Obon pickup, we have Reverend Kusunoki from Seattle Buddhist Church here visiting. Uh, Reverend, thanks for visiting today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just curious, you know, what are the things that you miss about a traditional Obon here? Well, well, of course, you know, people get together. Then actually we dance together, eat together. Then we have fun together. That's what we are missing. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but in terms of food, you have bento here, but what are some of your favorite uh, Obon foods? Ah, uh, of course, teriyaki chicken is one of my favorite. Then, let's see, beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the beer garden next year will have that, and yeah, then I'm we'll have chicken. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did uh, Did Seattle have their obon this year? We had a virtual obon. They, we also had a food, just like this, you know, a drive-through food pickup we have. Yes. Okay. Well, next year we're looking forward to everyone getting back to normal Obon Festival. And next year, Tacoma will be celebrating their 70th anniversary. Wow, ah, okay, so, yeah. yeah. I'm sure I'm coming to Tacoma's Obon 70th anniversary. Thank you. As well as we'll visit Seattle. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Crystal Inge, and we are so appreciative of everyone who has supported us through the pandemic. I think we've all found new ways to band together and to really stay connected. I also hope you've enjoyed the highlights of our Obon drive through festival. Albeit small, I think we've all had a great time. And as you know, Obon is a time for us to remember our ancestors and to those who have passed before us so we can enjoy our lives today. And if you are willing and able, we certainly appreciate any donations um, in memory of your friends and family, in memory of any Obon experience and support of our temple. So thanks again for staying tuned and look out for more news on upcoming events and we hope that we can all be together for the 2022 Obon Festival, which will be our 70th anniversary. So thanks again and talk to you soon. Hey, well there you have it. We hope you enjoyed our behind the scenes look at what it takes to make uh, 2021 Tacoma drive through Obon. You know, we miss the hustle and bustle of the dancing, the food, but wait till next year when we celebrate our 70th Obon anniversary. There'll be a lot of special things, and we hope that you can all join us with live performances, live dancing, and a lot of fun. So until then, see you next year. Hey John, what do you usually have at a, at a beer garden? Well, we would have homemade plum wine, we would have different kinds of sake, we'd have a couple of different choices of beer, um, we'd have different uh, snacks that people could have, uh, spam, wasubi was usually at the tables, yeah. Oh, great. So what about this year? We got anything? Well, this year our selection is a little, little uh, more limited. Um, we just have one beer selection here, and maybe we could have a toast. Hey, sounds great. Where's the beer? Here we go. Oh. Sessions, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here's to uh, next year's beer garden. Hope hey. you all come and join us. Come by. Come by. Oh my gosh, that tastes good. That's good. It's still good. Great. Look what you can look forward to to next year's 70th Obon Festival. <laughs>